Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to create a value list combo box in Microsoft Access. So what is a value list combo box and how is it different from a relational combo box? Well, a value list combo box has a list of options that are stored in the box itself. You usually set this list of options at design time when you build the combo box. The pros are the user can type in options that are not in the box if you allow it. And I'll show you how to allow it or not allow it in just a minute. Or even edit the list in place if you, again, allow them to. No separate tables are required. So it doesn't have to get this list from a table. This is good for storing simple text values or values where the user might type something unexpected once in a while. Where you want to give them a list of options to pick from, but they're still free to type in whatever they want. That's why a combo box can be a good mixture. It's a combination between a list box and a text box. Some examples, you could do state, payment type, delivery method. I'm going to add one there, contact type. I'll explain that in a few minutes. Now, the con is if you use a value list combo box, that data is stored in the combo box itself. So you have to maintain multiple lists if you're going to keep the same list on multiple forms. So use it in one spot only, okay? Now, a relational combo box is the one that you see most of the time in a, in a database. It gets its list of values from another table or query. The list of options is generated on the fly based on the data from another table. If you use this box on multiple forms, you don't have to keep updating the list. This is good for storing related record information. For example, the picture that you see here, we're picking a customer for our order form. Right. And you might have that customer list in multiple different places in your database on the order form, right? In the shipping form, everywhere you want to pick a customer. You don't want to have to have to update that list in multiple places. Now, the downside to this is it takes a lot more work to update this list, but it's not that hard. You can set up something called a list items edit form that makes it real easy. And I'm going to add something I just thought of. You generally, generally can't freely enter text. You can if you allow the user to type in something into that box, then you have to know how to use some VBA to add that to the list. And that's a lot more complicated using something called a not in list event. So for most databases, you generally make this something where you have to pick from an existing list of items. But of course it's access. There's, a, there's ways around everything. <laughs> now I got a whole separate video on building relational combo boxes. So go watch this video if you wanna learn about those and you should. But in this video, we're going to focus on the value list combo boxes. All right, let's go make a couple. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. You can go grab a copy of this if you want to. It's on my website. I'll put a link down below. And let's make a real simple one. Here is the example that I like to use for a simple value list combo box. Let's say you want to be able to pick the state from a list of states. Now, you don't have to go ahead and type in all 50 of them up front if you don't want to. Let's say you only do business in three states. So that's a nice, easy example. But the user can still type in other states if they want to, if you get someone from out of state, for example. But you want to give them that list of three main states to pick from. All right, so let's go into design view. Let's delete the state field that's here. Goodbye. That's just a text box. We're going to need a little bit more room, so I'm going to shrink up city just a hair. Let's go up to our toolbox and find the combo box, that guy right there. We're going to drop it right there in that spot. The wizard starts up. I'm going to type in the values that I want, hit next. All right, one column is fine for now. Let's put in here New York, Florida, and Texas. All right, those are the three states that we normally deal with, but you might have others, so you could still type them in. All right, next. Now we're gonna store that value in what field? We're still typing in text and we're saving it in the state field. Okay, we're not dealing with IDs at all here. It's a blessing and a curse. So there's pros and cons to both ways. All right, next. What label would you want? Doesn't matter. We're going to delete it in a second. Anyways, hit finish. Let's delete that label. It's right over there. We'll slide this guy into place. Do a little bit of that. Do a little bit of this. And there it is. Okay. Let's save it. Close it. Open it back up again. And there we go. Now, if there's text already in one of these fields, all right, you'll see it in there. But you can pick from a list now. See? And if you do have someone that's from a different state, let's say uh, Washington, you can still type in WA. 
All right, and I press tab. Now look at that. It goes to the next record. Why is it going to the next record? Well, because I just added this guy in last, so he's last in the tab order. All right, if you don't know what tab order is, I've got a different video on that. All right, there's my tab order video. I'll put a link to that down below as well. You can find it down under the video in the link section. We fix that right there. Click on tab order. All right. Oh, here's another thing. It's combo 30. Whenever you create a new combo box using the wizard, it gets a name like combo 30. I don't like that. We'll change that too. Well, let's move this up underneath city. So when we hit the tab key, it's going to go phone, address, city, state, zip. Okay. Let's hit okay. Let's rename this guy. Double click on it. Bring up the property sheet. I don't like combo 30. What is, what is combo 30? It's meaningless. All right. That wizard should ask you for a name instead of a label. All right. State. Now, when I'm working with most combo boxes, usually I like to end them in combo, but since this is only a value list, I'm just going to leave it as state, okay? Because it's not treated like a relational combo box is where I want to know that's got an ID in it. All right, save that. Let's close this. And now we should be good. If I type in this here, go tab, tab, I can either pick Florida and hit tab, or I could type something in here like Georgia, okay? Now, you might not want them your users to be able to type in anything they want. You might want to force them to have to pick from this list. So if that's the case, right click design view. All right, open up that property sheet again, double click, go to the data tab. Now, there's a couple things in here. Limit to list is default set to no, which means you're not limited to that list. You can type in anything you want. If you change that and set it to yes, that means the user has to pick from this list. However, the next setting here says allow value list edits, which means they can edit the list. Okay, so if you want to make it so they have to pick from these three states, you got to turn both of these things off. All right, so they can't change the list and they have to pick from that list. But let's leave this one on for a second. Let me save that. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, if you want to just type in any old thing here, if I type in, uh, if I type in PA, for example, it's not on the list. All right, if you type in something that's not on the list and you have limit to list set to on, then it says, do you want to edit the items in the list? Say yes, and this guy comes up. It'll put what you typed in at the bottom of the list. You can set a default value here if you want to. That's kind of nice. All right, if most of your business is in Florida, for example. Then hit OK. All right, now look at that. Pennsylvania's on the list. That little button there that's kind of visible. That's the same thing. If you click that, that opens up this guy. And this is also something you can use in relational combo boxes to add items to a table that this might be based on. That's called a list items edit form. All right, that's this guy. Again, got a video for it. Go watch that video. All right, so if you want to prevent them from doing that, you can come in here and set allow value list edits to no. All right, limit to list is yes. Allow value list edits is no. All right, save that, close it. And, and look real quick, let me show you. See what it did there? It adds that to the list up here. This row source is simply the data that's in the box. All right, and each item is inside of quotes and they're separated with semicolons. So you can add more on here if you want to, right? Just like that. Make sure you end it with a semicolon. Okay, and the downside to this again is if you want to put this somewhere else, like on your order form, or on a vendor form, you know, you've got to keep updating this list. That's why if this is a list that you want to get and use it in multiple places, make a table for it. Okay, store this information in a table, and that would be a relational combo box. Okay, so this is all fine and dandy, but honestly, most things like this that I could think of, they generally work better as relational combo boxes anyways. I, try, I tend to use this example in my beginner classes because it's easy to understand, but... I try to use value list combo boxes in places where I want to give the user a list of popular common options, but still give them the option to type in pretty much whatever they want to type in. And here's a good example of this, the contacts form. Now in my database, I have a contacts form. And basically a contact is anytime you talk to a customer or have an appointment with the customer or do anything for the customer, right? Like, you know, phone call. And then down here in the bottom, you can type in, you know, we talked about blah, 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 whatever. Okay. Then the following day, you know, um, another phone call came in. Okay. Then the following day, you have an appointment. 
okay? Now, down here is where you're going to type in the specifics, but up here, you keep repeating the same things over and over again. Phone call, phone call, right? Called about this, called about that. So this is the perfect candidate for a value list, okay? It's only used in one spot right here. You want to save text in the underlying table. You're not going to pick this from a list of other options, but you want to give the user the ability to type in whatever they want here, all right? So this is perfect for a value list. All right, design view. Let's get rid of description here. Okay, drop this down. Combo box, put it there. Type in the values that you want. And your list of popular things, right? Um, called in or called all out to, let's say, right? Appointment. Um, right? Mailed package, whatever, All right, Whatever your popular common things are that you type in here, All right? I'm sure those of you who make phone calls all day uh, or have, you know, contacts with customers all day, uh, you have certain things that you do over and over and over and over and over again for different customers. Okay. So make that as big as you want it to be. Next, we're going to save that in description. Next. Yeah. Label's going away. Bye. All right. Delete that. Close that. Slide this up into place where the other one was. Okay. Change its name to description. Come here. All right. I'll just copy this one. Copy. Control C. Paste. Okay. Tab order should be okay because there's only two fields in the detail section. Yeah. All right. So save that now. Close it. Close it. Now when I go to do contacts, you can see I got all the same data there. But if I have another contact here, I can just pick. You know, oh, I didn't put, I didn't put phone call in here, did I? Well, there's called in, called out to, all right, called out to, and then down here you type in blah, 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 blah. And then the next day, okay, I've got uh, an appointment for blah, 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 see? But, all right, um, uh, interview canceled. I'm still free to type in whatever I want. So this is the perfect use right here for a value list combo box, because this isn't a list that I want to save anywhere in a table. Right? See what I'm talking about? See what I mean? Whereas some things like this, this is a list of customers. And I might use this in different places. And I don't want to just easily, I don't, I don't want to just type in something random in here. Okay. Okay. Makes sense? Do you understand the difference between the two types of combo boxes now? All right. That's when you'd use a value list combo box as opposed to a relational combo box. If you want to learn more about value list combo boxes, I cover them in more detail in my Access Beginner Level 8 class. I cover all kinds of stuff in here with, uh, with multi-column combo boxes. You can do multiple columns in there. Combo boxes to search records, right? List boxes, some of those other properties we talked about, and a lot more. So check it out. So that's your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted.
Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.